Post uh, and I, the Wall Street Journal. Responding. Not exactly pleased. What, if you could just read a little bit of the Washington Post editorial. The Washington Post uh, lead editorial, very similar to the Wall Street Journal's editorial, basically saying he shouldn't have done this. New York Times, on the other hand, is saying he didn't go far enough, fast enough. Washington Post says, ending wars, nation building at home, the pivot to Asia, these are popular and attractive slogans, and they make a lot of sense in the abstract, but they don't necessarily bring peace to a dangerous world, and a president can't always safely choose which dangers he would rather confront. Richard, do you agree with that? I agree with the two critical uh, editorials. I, I disagreed with what the president said yesterday for two reasons. You just had a, a first round of an election in Afghanistan. You're going to have a new Afghan government. Why we would do this unilaterally and not work this out in dialogue and consultation with a new popularly elected Afghan mm -hmm. government is beyond me. More important, you can't make foreign policy by calendar. The, we should look at what we're doing in Afghanistan and say we're going to keep those forces there so long as conditions warrant against the backdrop of the totality of American foreign policy. But just say in, one, in a year or two years it turns out that a modest investment of U.S. forces is doing good. Just as modest investments of U.S. forces have done amazing good in places like Korea for, for decades. Why is it we would arbitrarily set a deadline and say no matter what? These troops are coming out. What kind of a signal does, does that send to the new government? What kind of a signal does that sound to the, send to the Taliban and to, to terrorists? I simply don't understand why, again, we're, we're approaching Afghanistan through a calendar rather than through local realities. Do you think that this announcement would affect the new government coming in in Afghanistan? Would it affect their reasoning whether or not to sign the bilateral agreement that Karzai has refused to sign? Uh, it could, but it kind of gives them a fait accompli. You sign it and you keep American troops here for two years, or you sign it, and you don't sign it and American troops leave even sooner. I would think it would have been an interesting negotiation. I would have think they would have been much more likely to sign it if we had said, and we're going to offer you considerably more for, for longer. That, to me, is the beginnings of a real security partnership. Well, right. Joining us now from Washington, former CIA director, former NSA director, retired General Michael Hayden. General Hayden, good to see you this morning. Good morning. Okay, so we know the troop levels now. End of this year, 9,800 troops end of 15, 4,900, and then by the end of 2016, we'll be out of Afghanistan for all intents and purposes a couple weeks before President Obama leaves office. Was this the right move? Uh, I think the number's okay. It's probably on the low end of the acceptable numbers from my point of view and the military's point of view, but I totally agree with, with Richard. This is a timetable, and it's not based upon conditions on the ground. We lose all leverage in negotiations with the new Afghan president. And, and finally, I mean, let me parse out what the president just said. Before I leave office, I'm going to make Afghanistan look like Iraq. Um, you know, going to zero in Iraq did not lead to a happy outcome. And now he's committed to doing the same thing in Afghanistan. I, I think it's fairly dangerous. Would leaving 10,000 troops in Iraq have made a difference in this circumstance? I, I actually do, and, and it really? makes a difference. Yes, I do, because without American forces in Iraq, two dynamics begin to take place, Joe. Uh, number one, the different factions in Iraq, with the Americans gone, allow their, their worst fears to motivate their actions with regard to the other factions. You don't have the Americans as a, as a dampening effect, kind of a guarantor that the worst won't happen. And since they don't have that guarantee, they all begin to look after their own interests, and we see what happens there. The second is, how different does Syria look mm. if we kept one or two fighter squadrons and maybe one combat brigade uh, in Iraq, for one thing, to prevent that Iranian supply line by air from Tehran into Damascus? Richard, I think a lot of Americans, they'll look at this and they say, okay, 2016, that'll be 15 years, a decade and a half in Afghanistan. That should be plenty of time for us. How long would you leave troops there in perpetuity? Because I don't think at any point when we leave Afghanistan, it's going to be a perfect place and a safe place. How long then, if you had your dream scenario, would you leave troops there? The answer is as long as it made sense. We've kept troops in, in Korea now, what, for 60 years since the end of the war there, and Americans are comfortable with that. We've kept troops in Europe for a long time, in Japan. You make a decision and you basically say, how much will it cost me to keep these troops there? What are they accomplishing for it? And if it turns out that 10,000 troops in Afghanistan, or in a place, as Mike said, I agree, in Iraq, would help dampen the internecine fighting, would train up the local forces, carry out counterterrorism units, missions, essentially make a place 
place that still matters to us, more stable and an acceptable cost, why wouldn't we keep 10,000 troops there in an open-ended way? That, to me, is a smart way of making national security. What makes me so uncomfortable with this is we're, say, we're setting these deadlines. It signals all sorts of people. And we're saying, what? No matter what, we're now committed to this. What happens if the president wakes up in two years and it turns out that his military advisors all say this is a good investment? Why would we, why would we pull the rug out from under it now? I don't understand why he would create this pressure on himself. Mike. General, you raised the issue of Iraq and keeping troops in Iraq and, and the numbers now being thrown on around about Afghanistan. But let me ask you, what does this have to do? Uh, the constant strain on the American military over the last 15 years, the military is now virtually a broken component of our war fighting capability. We've had mul people with multiple deployments to both places, Iraq, Afghanistan, five, six, seven, eight redeployments. What do you do about that in terms of troop strength in a country like Afghanistan? No, I, I understand, Mike, and it has been great strain, and these young men and women have borne a, a great burden on behalf of all of us. But, but 10,000 is not 180,000. Uh, a presence for training in counterterrorism is not the same thing as major force-on-force -force operations in two theaters, Afghanistan and Iraq, at the same time. I think the American military could sustain that. And look, I don't argue with the president pulling back the American combat mission, but the mere presence there for training and for counterterrorism to give confidence to the new Afghan government, I think it's a burden that the military can stand and still do the rebuilding that we all know it has to do after more than a decade of war. General Hayden, thank you very much. Still ahead on Morning Joe with